So as we continue the build of the Altar 8800, one of the things we're going to need is a floppy controller. And I've run into the same issue I did uh, with the serial card we looked at in the previous video, and that is obtaining an original card is nearly impossible. Uh, I didn't find any reproduction PCBs of the original card, but I did find this card. And this is the uh, FDC Plus. Uh, you can get this up on DRAMP.com, D-E-R-A-M-P.com. Uh, this emulates the original Altar floppy controller. Uh, and it's a really interesting card. Uh, so let's talk about some of the features. We, of course, have the floppy connector up here. And that connector, by default, is for 8-inch floppies. Let me another card here. It's floating around. Sorry if we're not prepping ahead of time. It comes with a little set of adapter boards that you can snap apart here and then put various connectors on to connect to uh, like the original Altar apparently floppies had like a 37 pin I think connector uh, regular 34 pins etc but so this can be used to adapt to different kinds of, of floppies so there's a mini disc adapter in the middle there's an Altar 8 inch drive adapter in the middle and there's a regular 5 and a quarter inch drive adapter in the middle and you snap these apart add the connectors and they can mount uh, in the case so it's an interesting card. Like I said, it can support 8 inch and 5 and a quarter inch floppies. Uh, it actually has support in some modes for using uh, soft sector floppies instead of hard sector floppies. Hard sector floppies have a hole in the inner ring for every sector on the disk. Soft sectors simply have one hole. So for some drives, this can actually emulate, like I said, hard sector disks in a soft sector drive. Uh, that, that, that you know, create some interesting capabilities. Uh, the other thing this has that is really cool is this connector here, and this is a high-speed serial bus connector, uh, RS-232 connector actually, and this can be used with server software on a PC to emulate floppies. So you set the dip switches accordingly, this cable goes off, there's a, a serial cable out, on my setup, a USB adapter to the PC, and then I'm running the little server to emulate floppies, and I can mount floppies, etc., in there. And from that, you could actually then hook up a, a real external floppy drive and, and create bootable media. Uh, it's a pretty nice little card. It's got uh, EEPROM on it with a monitor and the bootloader and those kind of things. It's got up to 64K of RAM built in. Uh, I've got the RAM disabled, so the starting address of the RAM is up here, and the starting address of the, the ROM is up here. So it's a neat little card. You set the modes on these four switches over here for what type of floppy you want to talk to. So this is really the best bet I could find to get a floppy controller that will eventually allow me to control you know, actual physical floppy drives. Uh, nice card. I've had really good luck with it. It's well built. Uh, it looks like it's well laid out. And it works really well. So even though there's 64k of, up to 64k of RAM available on this card, uh, the way I want to build this is I want to use as, as many original cards as I can. And I'm not going to have a lot of original cards, it turns out, in the system. We have the front panel interface card we built earlier. We've got the 8080 CPU card here. And then I've got the, the RAM cards we've looked at before. Each one of these is 16k of RAM. Uh, I believe it's actually static RAM, it has to be static RAM. And so I'm going to use these to get 48k of RAM in the system. So we can go ahead, if I can get them to go in. There's three of these. So here's the second 16k in the address space. Again, getting these lined up, well they'll actually go in. It's proven to be more difficult than it should be. We've got a third 16K RAM card to get us up to the full 48K. Let's see if I can get him to insert him. We've got the floppy disk controller, which I'll go ahead and insert. And we have the uh, serial I.O. card itself uh, 
you know, we looked at that that in a previous video. We will uh, talk about configuring the the dip switches on these cards to get these cards to play together uh, a little later in this video because you know first I really wanted to review the hardware. So there's the current installed set of cards in the machine. Uh, with five, you know, we've already occupied seven slots. There's three left down in the back planer only two yeah three left there's one back here in the back as well so you can see very quickly even with 10 slots the machines filling up quick uh, I do have a vintage 64k card that I need to repair that might make a better bet for this because it'll open up some additional slots but this gets us to the point where we should be able to control the system for the front panel 48k of RAM uh, either floppy emulation or actual floppy drives and the serial communications out so that's really the the hardware we're going to have in the back plane uh, as we kind of progress through this a uh, little bit down the road here in this same video so the next step is getting the switches on the various boards set on a combination where the boards all play together nice on the system bus so this is a graphic I drew for the uh, FDC plus board that basically captures uh, the green are the default switch positions and the red are changes I've made. So in this case I've disabled the onboard RAM on the FTC Plus controller because I actually want to use those three 16K cards that we looked at a little earlier in the video. And over here I've set the drive type to be serial drive as an uh, Altar 8 inch drive. And I'll be using that FTC server software on the PC via a serial connection uh, you know, to emulate floppies. Uh, the other card we have in the machine is the 882 SIO card. This is the newer reproduction, well, not really reproduction, but it's a newer card that has the, the same COM ports on it that were on the original 2 SIO card and a bunch of extra stuff. And on this card, same thing, I've drawn the graphic. Green indicates defaults uh, in most places. I think there's a, a discrepancy over here. But red are things that I have changed. I've disabled the onboard uh, monitor. So the onboard EEPROM is disabled. That's the AMON monitor. And I've set both serial ports to 19,200 baud. I had issues at 76,800 with the ports just not working. And at 38,400, they became flaky after a bit of use. I'm not really sure. Maybe just the old UARTs on here just aren't aren't up to the job. I don't know. But uh, at 19.2, uh, the systems worked really solid. So that really captures the, con the the jumper configuration of the two boards. So let's uh, jump in, get everything hooked up, and see if we can make the machine boot. So what we're looking here at here is the front panel of the machine, obviously, and uh, over here in the screen capture, I've got two TerraTerm sessions set up and the FTC. Uh, software emulation for the for the floppy drives. COM5 in my machine is hooked to the TTY0. So this is kind of the operator console on the machine. I've got COM1 hooked up to TTY1. And we'll look at Y here in a minute. So the first thing I kind of want to do here is let's go ahead and bring the Altair up. And we're up and running and let's set our Start address, let me reset it here. Our start address is set to F800. I've done a reset. And if we examine that address and run, we should get the Altmon monitor, and we did. So we're in the Altmon monitor. You know, the things you can do here, like dump uh, F800, FF bytes. What did I do wrong? Dump, oops, dump F800. Fine. We'll just let it cycle here since I can, obviously can't type over there. So you can see that we successfully got into the uh, monitor that, that's on the F8 or on the uh, FDC Plus card. And that monitor is running. So the next thing I want to do is try to boot the machine. So to reboot the machine, we're going to do a stop. And we're going to set the starting address at FFFF on the machine. And that's the entry point of that ROM on the FDC Plus card that has the bootloader. Let me do a reset. Let's examine this address and run. And the machine should now be waiting to find boot media. And if we come back over here to the disk emulator, and we go ahead and load up 
the CPM 48K image. I'm loading CPM 48 because I have 48K of RAM in the machine. And you can see here that instantly engaged. Uh, the disk was enabled and the machine actually booted up CPM. Uh, it's interesting that I got some garbage down here. I'm not sure where that came from. Let's go ahead and clear that off. So you can see there that through the software emulation, we've actually got the machine up and running. So I've really got three COM ports installed on my machine. I've got COM1 and COM2, and then COM5. Uh, you know, this is set up to the, the main TTY device, TT0, TT1, and COM2, and this is at the default baud rate of 403.2K. So from here, we can enter MBASIC. I'm getting strangeness on the screen here. Huh. I'm not sure why there's that one character bit of lag, but you can see the disk being accessed up here. The heads are stepping around. It's loading up MBASIC. Load. IO test. Basic. This is just a simple little basic program I wrote. There's, yeah, something a little odd here. Uh, with um, it's like a one character delay. Anyhow, it's probably a, an issue with serial ports again. I may have to reset TerraTerm. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close TerraTerm out here. And I'm going to rerun it and just see if that gets me back into sync. That's really kind of weird. So I want to go ahead and hook this guy up to serial port five. At nine or at 19200 baud. That's better. So I, I I'd left these running before. Uh, it just it had that weird, yeah, something weird with, with TerraTerm being left running. Anyhow, I have this little simple basic program that basically goes from a space to 127, uh, 32 to 127. That's basically the printable character set. And what it's going to do is it's going to output that character on this uh, port decimal 17 which is a TTY zeros data out port in this case it's going to do an out to again decimal 19 of that same character so it's going to basically using the out command write that character to both uh, uh, two terror term sessions here and when it's done it'll go back up to five and just loop so now if we run that we'll just see that start spitting out characters so there is a, a you know a pretty quick demo of Getting the machine booted was very simple to do. Once I got all the pieces together uh, and got the dip switch settings right so the cards would play nice together. Anyhow, I think I'll just go ahead and wrap this up here. It was a nice little demonstration. And I guess next steps in this build are going to be starting to get things into an actual case. So uh, I'll see you in the next video, and we'll talk soon.